Hallelujah. Are y'all ready to have church tonight? Amen. Give the Lord a hand as Brother Tim comes and lead us in prayer. Hallelujah, everybody. Aren't you glad to be here tonight? Aren't you glad to know who Jesus is? He's a lily of the valley, a bright and morning star. Oh, God, move in this service tonight. Help us, God, to receive your word, God. Oh, God, give us the spirit of the mind, God. Lord, to collect on your word, Lord. Oh, God, move in this service tonight. Touch, heal, and deliver. Oh, we ask it right now. In his name. What's his name? What's his name? Thank you, Jesus. Let's praise him tonight. Well, if you make one step, he'll make two. Well, there ain't no limit what God can do. He said, if you go, don't you worry about yourself. All you've got to do is make a step. Well, if you make one step, he'll make two. Well, there ain't no limit what God can do. That if you go, don't you worry about yourself. All you've got to do is make a step. He sent Moses down to Egypt's land with only a rod in his hand. He said, when it gets hard, just stretch out your rod. All you've got to do is make a step. Well, if you make one step, he'll make two. Well, there ain't no limit what God can do. He said, when you go, don't you worry about yourself. All you got to do is make a step. I'm going to walk on out in Jesus' name. I've been false accused, but I'm not ashamed. I've got faith in God, I've got faith in myself, and all I've got to do is make a step. Well, if you make one step, he'll make two. Well, there ain't no limit what God can do. He said, if you go, don't you worry about yourself. All you got to do is make a step. There's no need to worry, no need to cry. God's going to bless you by and by. You'll be blessed when the Lord gets through. I found out if you make one step, he'll make two. Well, if you make one step, he'll make two. Well, there ain't no limit what God can do. Don't you worry about yourself. All you gotta do is make a step. Well, if you make one step, you'll make two. Well, there ain't no limit what God can do. He said, if you go, don't you worry about yourself. All you gotta do is make a step. You gotta make a step. Just make a step. Just make a step. Just make a step. A step of faith. Just make a step. You gotta keep on going. Make a step. You gotta keep on pressing. You gotta keep on dancing. You gotta keep on singing. You gotta keep on praising. You gotta keep on fasting. You gotta keep on going. You gotta keep on praising. You gotta keep on praising. Too far to turn back now. Woo! 
if you make one step, he'll make two. For there ain't no limit what God can do. He say, when you go, don't you worry about yourself. All you gotta do is make a step. Well, if you make one step, you'll make two. Well, there ain't no limit what God can do. He said, when you go, don't you worry about yourself. All you gotta do is make a step. Praise the Lord. How many knows we got to quit waiting on God and just go ahead and step out in faith? Amen. Sometimes we just worry about what God's doing or what other people are doing at the moment. And we miss out on the Holy Ghost because we're worrying about what other people are going to think about us. We got to make up our mind that we're going no matter what. No matter who else is going, no matter what somebody thinks of you, we got to make up our mind we're going. Oh, Ananias, Ananias, tell me what kind of man my Jesus is. Oh, Ananias, oh, Ananias, Ananias, oh, Ananias, tell me what kind of man my Jesus is. Oh, Ananias, oh, Ananias, Ananias, oh, Ananias, tell me what kind of man my Jesus is. Well, he spoke to the wind, and the wind did obey. Tell me what kind of man my Jesus is. Well, he spoke to the sea, and the sea got calm. Tell me what kind of man my Jesus is. Oh, and I am, and I am, and I am, and I am. Tell me what kind of man my Jesus is. Oh, and I am, oh, and I am, and I am, and I am. Tell me what kind of man my Jesus is. Well, he spoke to the sea, and the sea got healed. Tell me what kind of man my Jesus is. Well, he spoke to the dead, and the dead they did rise. Tell me what kind of man my Jesus is. Oh, when and I am, oh, when and I am, and I am, oh, when and I am. Tell me what kind of man my Jesus is. Oh, when and I am, oh, when and I am, oh, when and I am. Tell me what kind of man my Jesus is. Water turned into wine. Tell me what kind of man my Jesus is. Well, he spoke to the cripple, and the cripple they did walk. Tell me what kind of man my Jesus is. Oh, when and I, oh, when and I, oh, when and I, tell me what kind of man my Jesus is. Oh, when and I, oh, when and I. Jesus is. Well, he spoke to the dumb, and the dumb they did talk. Tell me what kind of man my Jesus is. Oh, and I oh, and I am, oh, and I am, oh, and I am. Tell me what kind of man my Jesus is. Oh, and I oh, and I am, oh, and I am. Jesus 
but you gotta put yourselves a certain way. The w eventually, I had to put the wood a certain way so the boxes could go on top of it. We gotta go. A, we gotta put ourselves a certain way. We can't have ourselves comfortable. We might have to turn ourselves that we don't want to, but but we have to if we want we if we want the sinner to come in, and, that, and that's why. And that's what we're here for. That's why God put us on this earth. That's our goal as a Christian to get people saved and get as many as we can saved. So help the help the sinner. Amen. I mean, he's gonna let God do what He wants to in your life, so that the sinner might be saved. It's not about me. It's about others. Amen. Your pastor, big hands, he comes. Amen. Come on, clap your hands for the Lord tonight. Amen. Come on, you can do better than that for Jesus. I didn't say for me. Come on, I said for Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes. Amen. You may be seated tonight in the presence of God, our Savior and King. Such a great atmosphere, amen, in this house tonight. I believe somebody's going to get something, amen. Going to lead different than the way that you came, amen. So when you look up down your road and just tell somebody, I'm glad to see you. And then tell them, say, here, 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 amen. Amen. It's good to see each other at home, and it's good to see each other at Walmart when we run into each other, amen, and different parts of town, but there's no place like seeing somebody in the, in the house of the Lord, amen, and so we're glad about that tonight, amen. I covet your prayers. I'm going to preach tonight, jump on a plane in the morning, head to Florida in the morning, preach there tomorrow night as soon as I get land and then preach Friday jump up Saturday come back be here Sunday morning and Sunday night amen and so God is just using us and taking us different places and we're glad about that praise the Lord if you have your Bibles let's go to the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 30 what you see on the screen Deacon Dan can we uh, just on the on the lights on the stage, just dim those just a little bit right there, where they can see it when we get in there. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Amen. Book of Proverbs, chapter thirty. I hadn't done no PowerPoint in a long time, but I felt like that this would be a good PowerPoint teaching lesson. Amen. As we work on it for a few Wednesdays. All right. Proverbs chapter thirty. Verse 24 through 28. This is what the uh, the writer says, the confessions and the instructions of Agur. This is who wrote this chapter. And he says, There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. The ants are people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The conies are but a feeble folk, Yet make they their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king. Yet go they forth, all of them by bands. The spider taketh hold with her hands and is in the king's palaces. Can somebody say amen to the reading of God's word? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for all that you've done, God, for gathering us here one more time, God, in your house, in the holy sanctuary that you have given us, God, in this day, in this hour, and in this great location of the Appalachian Mountains. God, I'm asking you to anoint me, God, that we're making teaching and preaching easy, and for the people of God to receive what you're saying to them through the word of the Lord. This we thank you and praise you, Lord, for in Jesus' name. God's people that believe it says amen. Clap them hands and bless the Lord tonight. Come on. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you tonight. I'm going to keep talking uh, from the subject, don't 
overlook the little. Amen. Somebody say, don't overlook the little. Uh, we didn't even get to teach, and so my wife asked me uh, today, she said, can you do me a favor? I said, yes, honey. She said, can you actually get to the material instead of preaching? I said, yes, dear, I will do the best that I can. You need to talk to the Holy Ghost, all right? I can't help what gets on me, all right? We had a good laugh out of it. So we're going to talk about, we started last week about how God uses the little overlooked foolish things. 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 29. For you see your calling, brethren, how many, how, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, speaking also after the flesh, not many noble are called. So God doesn't always pick who we uh, qualify to be picked. And we talked about that last week, about all the way through the Old and New Testament, that God picked people and circumstances that were abnormal, unqualified for God to use in particular situations. And then uh, Paul keeps on writing and says, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Now he's writing from experience. We talked a little bit about that. This past uh, Sunday night, that if the Lord will allow me when I get back in town to continue preaching on uh, about a window in a basket. You know, Paul was, according to Ananias, Lord, you can find somebody else. This is foolish to find somebody else, to, find, to, to use this person to preach the gospel. Uh, he was considered a foolish man, and yet God picked him. He says, And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And God uh, had chose the base things of the world, uh, and, the, and all the things which are despised have God chosen, and, yet, and, and these things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are. Why? That no flesh should glory in his presence. So the reason that God takes all these little things, uh, things that are despised and overlooked, is because he wants to get the glory out of it. And so the writer here, Agur, in Proverbs chapter 30, he notices four creatures, not the elephant, not the lion, not the cheetah, uh, not, not the bear, not the wolf, not the eagle. He sees four things that he says are exceedingly wise, four little bitty things. And so the first one we're going to talk about tonight is the ants. And so we're going to hopefully just get through the ants tonight. Uh, and he talks about it. And he says, the ants are a people or a group, a colony um, that are not strong uh, compared to human nature. A cure at the time does not have the uh, availability of scientific research as we do. Because I'm going to show you something about the ant here in just a little bit. And I believe that you're going to be amazed by. Is that all right? But he's talking about they're not strong in other words compared to you compared to you an ant is not strong they're small overlooked until they all in your house come on somebody you know you leave something open a coca-cola can and you go to drink from it look somebody said somebody's had an experience uh, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. Tonight we're going to deal with the key word here that he's speaking to is prepare. They're not just strong people, but they do something that is exceedingly wise. They prepare their meat in the summer. This word prepare here means to make something ready for use or considera consideration. It also means created in advance or pre-planned to be prepared and I believe that is one of the major things that is wrong with the church is we are not prepared we are not the catcher in life because the catcher in life a catcher in baseball is prepared for the ball that's coming he tells the pitcher what to throw and based on the agreement of what the pitcher and the catcher says the catcher is ready for the curveball for the inside fastball, for the high fastball. Do you see where I'm going at? It's the, they're not wondering what's happening, but they are prepared in advance. Let me tell you something about our God. The reason why the ants here are really godlike, because God spoke to me, and he said, you tell my people that they're really ungodly. 
What does it mean to be ungodly? To be not like God. Because God is always prepared. Anything you go through doesn't catch God off guard. It may catch you off guard. It may catch your friends off guard and people off guard. But what you go through, God already knows in advance what you're going through. And God said that what you got to do is quit being like you and stop being like me. And I'll show you what's coming. And I'll give you the power to succeed because I did it throughout the Bible and I'll do it for you. Somebody say, get ready. Let's be prepared. Let's be prepared. That, that, that is, that they are preparing here. The ants are preparing for the future. It says, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. What are they preparing their meat for? Is because they know that there is a season coming thereafter that we ourselves are about to endeavor upon called the winter. And in the summer, instead of just looking at that moment saying it's a nice, beautiful, sunshiny day, they know that the snow is coming, the winter wind is coming, the cold temperatures are coming, and what's growing in abundance now is not going to be in abundance in the future, so they have to get it now. Let me tell you something. Don't you dare take this church for granted. Don't you dare take these services for granted. Don't you dare take this preaching and singing and prophesying for granted, because there may just come a day where things happen and we don't get to come here like we're coming now, and you better have got what you've got and get it and obtain and say I've got something for now and I've got something for the future ready or not Jesus is coming ready or not the book's going to be fulfilled and I made up my mind like the five wise virgins I'm going to have oil in my lamps I'm going to have some oil ready for when the bridegroom comes I'll be able to turn on my light and say I'm ready for the bride can you say amen did somebody say get ready? Tell you a few things about the ants tonight. Are you ready? Are you ready? The first thing is they do not live on or in the past, but they live for the future of what's coming. Paul said, forgetting those things which were, are behind you. The ant does not worry. Well, I made a mistake yesterday, or I got upset yesterday, or thing this didn't happen yesterday, or my house got messed up yesterday. You know what they're doing? They're preparing their meat for the, for the future. And what the church must do is quit living in the past and say, God is about to do something in our future. I'm tired of going to church and hearing about what God just did for AA. Allen, Amy Super McPherson, Jack Cohen, all the greats, and Brother Hall and Brother West. Thank God for all of them, but that's living then. The ant says, I'm not living then. Then has already happened, but I'm preparing for what's coming in the future. We've got to be a people that learn from the ant and say, I'm not living in the past. I'm not trying to go by the past, but I've got to go where I've never been before. What I hasn't seen, what ear hasn't heard, Neither has it entered. God, I'm trying to teach. But God told me to tell you, get ready for the, don't live in the past. Don't live in what happened. Don't live in your mistake. Don't even live in your success. Live like uh, the day is a new day and you don't know what tomorrow holds. Look at someone say, quit living in the past. Quit living in the past. I, I hate it when I hear older people tell me, well, them young folk ain't got it like we got it. We'll give it to them. Can somebody say amen? What's happened? What's happened? Why is it as good as it used to be? It's because we keep living in what has happened. Instead of pressing on in to what God has wanted us to do. That's like going into the threefold part of the tabernacle. There's an outer court, inner court, holies of holies. And when you walk into the tabernacle and you get in the outer court, there's a lot of stuff going on. But guess what? There's an inner court. And then after the inner court, there's the holies of holies. And in the holies of holies is the presence of God. Now, you can't stay in the outer court and expect to get the same experience in the inner court. You've got to leave one stage and go into the next stage. And when you get done with that stage, leave that stage and go to the next stage. That's why the writer says we are 
change from faith to faith and from glory to glory that we're going for higher heights and deeper depths in God. We're preparing ourselves. What we're doing now is just not going through the motions. I, I hope you didn't come to church to go through the motions tonight to say, well, I come to Wednesday night service. I hope you come here to get something that'll prepare you for tomorrow, that'll prepare you for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, that you'll get something that says, I'm ready no matter what the devil brings in me, no matter what the seasons change. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. So we got to get ready. Let me tell you something else about the ant. Number, number two, they can have delayed gratification. If they're preparing their meat in the summer, that means that they've got to get meat, not eat meat, but take it back and store it for a future moment. So that means that when they get meat, that they don't eat what they see, but they can delay their gratification to say, I may need this in a futuristic moment. That's why some of you have futuristic problems with your money, is you do not know how to have delayed gratification. You get $20 and you spend it. I'm preaching. I'm pastoring tonight. I'm on pastor, man. You spend it and then you get in the future and have something come up. Like, where's all my money? Well, if you hadn't spent it on candy and Coke, Coca-Cola, not the other kind. Hope not the other kind. I pray to God. We need to really pray for you. You're going to really have some problems. Just a joke. Don't get upset. All right. But they can have delayed gratification. In other words, they can say, I, I, I can wait. Woo. I, I can get something and wait. Ants, uh, I'll tell you something, not even in the notes. Ants have two stomachs. One stomach is to get something for the moment to eat, to give them the energy to get back and take their food back and not only store it and grow it because ants were the first farmers. You can go look in the ant colony and you'll find that they have different uh, rooms, if you want to call it, where they grow their own food. So they go out and they get seed and stuff and they grow their own food. They're preparing themselves. So when it looks like everything's dead above ground, there's something growing. I ain't got time to talk about all that. There's something growing down on the inside of the ground because they made preparation. But if they, do, if they eat it as soon as they get it, see, that's why tithing and giving is so important. Woo. You're like, well, if you made a, you think it's just a storehouse, you stored it up. It's an investment in your future. So for instance, you've got $100 and your tithe is $10 off of that. And you're like, man, that ten dollars. Oh man, I could do something with that ten. Well, that's a kid, you know, because in any ten dollars ain't do nothing no more. Anybody know what I'm talking about? A quarter tank of gas, if you're blessed. I mean, that's if you're driving a four cylinder with only got twelve gallons in it. Yeah. But I say, I'm just using. It. I, do, I do that ten dollars, or you could take that ten dollars and say, well, I know I could do something with it now, but I'm going to trust God. And I'm going to put it into God's hands. And I may not have the $10 now, but if I put it in the storehouse, God Almighty, if I put it in the place that it can grow, that 10 God will add to it and multiply it into my future if I bless the house of God. And the, so you've got to have delayed gratification. And for some of you that are tithers, you know the only reason you got what you got is you have given to God. You bless men and women of God. You could have used it then. You could have done something with it then. You could have went on vacation. You could have did this and that, but you said I'm going to sow it and let God grow it. And when you had delayed gratification, God's giving you stuff that you shouldn't have. You're driving cars. You shouldn't drive. You're living in houses. You shouldn't live in. You got, oh, I guess anybody know that you're blessed? You gotta have that ability. You gotta have that ability. Okay, I can. I, and I just use tithing. And it's, but delayed gratification has got to come in all stages of your life. There's so many people that borrow against their future. I, I tell you something that don't don't make no sense to me is somebody will have a 2020 brand new spanking vehicle, but the front door is falling off of their house. Come on, somebody, and it's leaking on the inside. 
and you know they got plastic up over the windows not just to keep cold out because the windows are broken but they're driving outside they're driving a 2020 paying 800 a month when in all actuality they should have got a hoopty Something that'll get you from A to B. I don't care. Let me tell you, if it can get me from A to B, I don't care if it's a 2020 or 1990. If it can get me where I'm going, oh, because I'd rather have my house taken care of what I'm living in than trying to trying to keep up with the Joneses. See, some of you trying to keep up with everybody else. When y'all say, God, whatever you want me to have, I have. And I'm going to do the best that I can with what I have until I can get better. I'm going to delay my gratification to have something in my future. Young people, hear me. Ask your parents. They made some mistakes because they wanted to have, so they want everybody to talk about it. Who cares what somebody says about you? To be honest, I say, oh, that's such a nice car. And then they'll go, there, I wonder what kind of money they're making. You know, I wonder who they robbed to get that money. To Them same people that compliment you are the same folk that will talk about you. Don't try to impress nobody. Preach, Pastor Ward, that's good. Let's go on. Let's keep talking about the ant. Let's keep going. They have enough faith to believe that they'll be there in the winter. You don't prepare for something that you don't believe that you ain't going to be there to take part of. Jesus. Mm. So they're preparing for what's coming because they believe that they're going to see it. Oh, God am I. Well, someone says, well, what if they die? Then it don't matter. I hope Jesus comes back tonight. But if he don't come back for another hundred years, I'm going to still be preparing for the coming What this does is they have faith to believe that they'll be there in the winter. Then this is what it does. Their work then is what keeps them going and drives the worry out about their certain the, 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 the current circumstance that they're in. Because in the summer, it rains. In the summer, uh, is anybody here that mowed and weedy ever went over an anthill? Well, I guess y'all have somebody else mow for you. But I got a few anthills at the house. And you know what? I mow over it. <laughs> I weeded it over it. And those ants, they, they go crazy. They'll come out from everywhere. They're going all over the place. I've, uh, I've uprooted stuff, cleaning up stuff, find ants. We found a bunch of my tent stuff, didn't we? That, yeah, yes, didn't we, Sister Sarah? Woo, Lord Jesus. Bunch. Bunch of ants. Man, I still have ants. Lord have mercy. Ants from the tent revival. I gave some to the tent lot, and the tent lot gave some to me. All right? Let's just put it that way. I mean, I got ants. But you know what? Those ants, you know what? Even though it messed up their, their, their current circumstance, the ant just keeps on working. It may be raining, but they keep on working. The wind may be blowing, but they keep on working. Somebody may run over their nest with the, with the lawnmower, but they keep on working. Why? Because they say, I'm not going to let what I'm going through stop me from getting ready for my future. So I'm just going to work through it. God told me to tell somebody, work through it. Don't give up in it. Don't stop. Don't keep, just say, I'm going to work through this thing. And I'm going to let the work that I'm doing for God and doing in my life run out the work that comes from sitting around doing nothing. I found, the, I found out that the most, most people that worry to death, uh, most folk, don't get mad at me, ain't doing a whole lot. Why is that? Because they, they have time to sit around and think. And an idle mind is the devil's playground. When you, when you sit down, and y'all, you some of you know it's the truth, you worry yourself, to death. But have you ever noticed that when you're doing something else that you got your mind on something else that you don't think about what could be going wrong? Have you ever wondered about that? Why? So the devil just wants you to give up. He wants you to sit down and get you to worry. 
and get you to get upset and get you to get mad. He don't want you to work because if you start working to what God has for you, then you put worry behind you. And when worry leaves, faith arises, and faith is what pleases God. Because oh, without faith, it's impossible to please Him. So if I've got faith, then I can please God. So when you start working, you're saying, God, I believe that what you have for me is greater than what's behind me. And so I'm not going to let what's going on with Corona, with COVID, with Democrats, with Republicans. I'm, I'm working on As we sing, I'm working on a building. I'm working on a building. Uh, I'm working on a building for my Lord, for my Lord. If I was a sinner, I'd tell you what to do. i quit my sinning. I'd stop working. Because when you work on this thing, you'll find out that greater is he that's in you than he is. And he's in the world. Can somebody say amen? Can, can, can we talk some more? Look, look at this. They are willing, an ant is, to look stupid now for something bigger in the future. They're working in the summer, 90 degrees. What are you working so hard for? What are you doing right so much? Uh, other, other insects come by like, what are you doing? It's too hot to be going back and forth, back and forth, getting this and putting it here, getting that and put it there. It, it's, it, you, you look stupid. It's too hot. But they said, we don't care if you think we're stupid. Because when you're freezing to death and you're hungry and the sun ain't shining and it ain't 90 degrees, we'll be setting up in the house eating that meal that we prepared in the summer. Noah preparing the ark is a prime example. He had the ant anointing. Yeah. God told him that build an ark. What for? It's going to rain. What's rain? Rain had never happened. The way it used to be in the beginning, go read Genesis, that the, that the rain never came from the heavens, but the earth was so blessed that dew came up from the earth. And it wet the heavens. But sin by men began to corrupt the earth. And so God had to change the order. It was never meant for the, for the heavens to be blessing the earth. It was meant for the earth to be so fruitful and multiplied that they should be blessing the heavens. Guess what? We're going back to that. Because we are made from the earth. And when we praise God, it's like the dew that comes up and it blesses the Lord. Oh, my God in heaven. You need to quit looking for a heavenly blessing and say, I'm going to bless the Lord myself. I'm going to lift up God myself. And if something comes down, great. But if not, I've got a map. I've got to worship. And I'm going to praise God. I would, that's not part of the message, but it's extra. But let's, let's keep looking at it. And so God said, it's going to rain. Well, what's rain? He said, the, 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 the fountains of the deep are going to open up. There's going to come water out of the heavens. And so he said, start building an ark. Build this boat. And he told him to build it out of gopher wood. Well, Lord, I understand building a boat. It's going to prepare all these people. You know, because Noah was expecting people. He got up and preached every day. It's going to rain. No, it ain't. What's rain? No, you stupid. It ain't never rained before. There ain't no water ever come down. Didn't you see it yesterday? The dew went all the way up into the sky. That's what's going to keep happening. You, you, you crazy. Now, I heard what God said. See, because God will tell you something that will sometimes make you look stupid. God Almighty. There's people that watch our program and they get off there and they text somebody and they're like, them folk are cuckoo down there. Those folk are stupid. They That's a cult. That's a bunch of radical fanatics. I know what they say. I know what a bunch of you say because God reveals to me when I'm praying what you say about me. But you can call me stupid now. Oh, but when the rain starts falling in the future and when the deep opens up and I'm setting up in the ark and I'm setting up in the blessing, you'll say, my God, they weren't so stupid after all. They had an input. God had spoken to them and they was willing to look crazy now. If you're not willing to look crazy now, you'll never have nothing in your future. Never. You'll never have nothing. If you always got to fit in, you'll never have nothing in the future. Go back to, let's just say 1975, and say, 
someone says there's going to be something called the internet and then there's going to be phones but not rotary phones you will carry a phone in your pocket and then you will be able to touch the screen there will be no push buttons and you'll be able to take pictures with that phone and send pictures in 1975 they say you stupid but those people that invested in a crazy idea are multi-millionaires tonight. God Almighty. Sometimes you've got to be able to invest in something that everybody else says is crazy and everybody else says is awful and everybody else says don't make no sense because you got a feeling. Uh, you say, my God, I'm preparing for the winter time. That's what investing in the kingdom is. I'm going to say amen. So Noah was told, and all of a sudden, you know, so Noah began to build. He began to build. He began to build. And they, he preached every day, and they said, you're crazy. He built, and he built, and he finally got the ark prepared. And all of a sudden, it happened just like God said it would happen. But he had to be willing to be like the ant to look stupid for something bigger in his future. Hello? Is that not right? Let me give you, let me give you a few more ant facts. It's 746. I, I, I purposely made Brother Steve uh, give me the mic early so I could give you the things that God's given me. Is that all right? Let's look at these ants a little bit more. See them up there? <laughs> Heard somebody say, ugh. Uh, man, I, I know how to get some of y'all to dance. I'm going to release some ants. The ants are going to make you dance. Hallelujah. Yeah, I heard it. You'll be, woo. You'll be like Tim singing, fall all around there, fall me. Ants is going to work in this church. I got a feeling for some of y'all. I ain't moving three years. I get you. <laughs> hey, Lord, have mercy. Look here. Ants are made up of colonies, different groups of ants. Ants are all the same, but they have different colonies like different churches. But, but each ant in the colony has its own job to do. There are soldier ants. I'm, I'm just telling you a few of them. There's queen ant, soldier ants, worker ants, and there's a few other kind of ants within the colony. Soldier ants protect, fight off. Worker ants go get the food. They have a system. And as long as they live, they do it. It's not on one ant. It ain't on just the pastor. It ain't on just the deacons, it ain't just on the singers, but everybody in the colony has their job to do, and they do it. They are a working people. I want us to be a working church. I don't want us to, I, if we're going to be the biggest church but the laziest church, I don't want it. I don't care about numbers. Because I know some big churches that are lazy. Won't witness. Won't pray, won't fast, won't get nobody delivered. Why they got big numbers? Because people like being lazy. The ants are working people. And they have their own job and they do it. Within this, they have a great organization and cooperation, which equals the word unity. So they have the same goal in mind. So for instance, have you ever seen you left the, the kids left the cracker out. Oh man, I hear parents and they're like, "Oh my God!" You let me, you've ever watched ants? I, I've watched them before, and until I read this, kind of really didn't think about it. But I've seen one go get you know part of it, and all of a sudden here comes another, and they get it. They're all going to the same cracker until that cracker is gone, and then they find something else. God Almighty. They don't give up like, oh, we got one cracker. Oh, we got one. Well, oh, we, we, got, we got one piece of candy. We got one Fig Newton bar. Come on, somebody. They're like, whoo, we got, that, you know, that, that's how, oh, one person got saved this month. Well, what about two? What about three? What about four? Come on, somebody. I, I, see, it, it ought to work. When they get done with one job, they're like, okay, let's find something else to do. Let's not just have one good service ever once in a while and one good meeting ever once in a while, but let's continue 
to have the same goal and say, let's have some more. Let's do some more. Let's preach some more. Let's pray some more. Let's worship some more. Let's fast some more. Uh, let's seek God some more. You know what I'm saying? This is something else I thought that was interesting uh, about what they do. They teach their young. It has been proven that ants are not born with the ability to do the jobs that they do. That they are taught by their family members what to do. Oh. Mom and daddy. Grandpa and grandma. Aunts and uncles. These little ants in here are wanting to learn from you. Mm. So you need to teach them. You know how ants teach them? They take them with them and they show them. This is a cookie. This is what we're going to get and eat. This is what we're going to take back. So you can't tell your children you praise God and you sit there. No, no, you, no, no, it don't work like that. If you want your children, your sons and your daughters to get it, you can't just tell them, but you got to teach them. You got to say, this is how you pray. This is how you fast. This is how you worship. This is how you dance. This is how it's done. And that's why we have to keep going over and over and over and doing the same stuff because we don't teach nobody else. Oh, but I remember my mama getting me up in the prayer closet and say, this is how you pray. I'd go like this. i pray for the whole world. And then I'd get up and she grabbed me by my ear and say, you're going to pray for more than the world, son. And she'd say, she tell me names to pray. She said, you're going to pray this, and you're going to pray here this low. Oh, yes. You want, I, I want my kids to be like pastor. Well, you better make them pray like my mother made me pray. And you better make them read their Bible like my daddy made me read my Bible. It didn't just come because I was born with a great skill. My mom and dad birthed me into this thing, pushed me into this thing, and you've got to do the same. Deuteronomy chapter 6. What time is it? Can we read it? Uh, give me eight minutes. Deuteronomy chapter 6. I'm done at, I'm done at 8. Because I got three little things after this. Woo, woo, woo. Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Let's read it. I'll show you something here. We, you know, we, we like, there's one verse in here we really jump up and down on. Uh, you know, and I believe it's the fourth verse. You know, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. We're like, oh, he's one, yes. Well, let's read verses 1 down through 7. Listen to this. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God command to teach you that you might do them in the land whether you go to possess it, that thou mightst fear the Lord thy God to keep all of his statutes and his commandments which I command thee, and thy son and thy son's son all the days of thy life, and thy, that thy days may be prolonged or long. So you got to do what God tells you to do if you want to live a long life. Listen to this. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe and do it, that it may be well with thee, and that they may increase mightily as the Lord thy God uh, of thy fathers hath promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. And listen, now we've got to keep reading. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently. Not one time a month. Not, you know, let's go to church on Easter and Christmas and But you shall teach them diligently daily unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, not just in church, not just in Sunday school. It ain't up to the Sunday school teacher's parents. Hello, somebody. Uh-huh. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou rise up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and thou shalt be frontless between thine eyes. So listen to this. He said, look, you got to teach your children like the ants. They teach their young. They teach their young. we got to teach them. Can someone say amen? And some of you, parents, you was taught well. When you was a child, you know the old way. 
You know the holiness way. You remember, you know, bee bonnets. I'm not saying we had to do that, but I'm just saying. You remember that. You remember, you remember dancing, shouting. Come on, somebody. Bobby pins flying, that's right. I remember my mother got so drunk the Holy Ghost one night that she came out with two different pair of shoes or one shoe, and they wasn't even hers. I said, my God, I got some. Oh, I got to find out whose these are. And there was two different ladies, and they had everybody. Had, that's how much they got drunk up in the Holy Ghost, danced and shouted their shoes out and got each other's shoes on when they went out the door. That's good. That's good, ain't it, Timmy? You remember them days? I love it. Tim says, I love it. Hallelujah. You learn it. You've seen it. They taught you. Uh, but now you don't want to do the same thing. I had somebody tell me, I, you, know, you know, I love your preaching. I love you getting wild and hard, but I just, I can't do that. And I said, well, why? He said, man, it just makes me so tired. I said, so, I, you know, I feel energized. You know me, you know, uh, that's how, you know, I feel like just, you know, getting up and doing it. I feel, so I leave feeling deader than the doornail. You said, well, why you preach that way? Because when people go to ball games and yell their head off, they leave tired too because they are excited. That's why I preach the way I do is I want to show these children that this ain't something that's dead. This ain't something that's boring. But this is something that's got fire. It's something that's got power. Something that's got anointing. It's something that I'm excited about. And I want you to be excited about it. Someone say amen. All right, get out of the way. Let me give you my last three points here. They teach their young. Uh, the ants, they are not selfish. Ants will find food and, when, and then on their way back to their colony will leave what, they call, what we would call the chemical trail. It's called pheromones. Uh, that tells the other ants where to find the food. So they go up here and they, I found an Oreo that Josiah left. Because he likes Oreos. That's one of his favorites. Whew. And so they get it. And they're on the way back. And all of a sudden they keep leaving signals. Oh, it's here. That's here. It's here. And when they get to an ant, the other ant, where'd you get that? Just follow the trail. It, it's over there. <laughs> it's over there. See, when we get a hold of something, we shouldn't want to say, this is just for me. But when God blesses us, when God heals us, when God delivers us, you ought to find somebody say, oh, look what I got. You can have it too. I got healed. You can be healed. I got delivered. You can be delivered. I got set free. You can be set free. We ought to try to fill the church up with people that's looking for something. There's somebody looking for healing. Somebody looking for deliverance. And if you ain't got it, then that's fine. But if you've got the Holy Ghost, and you've got the power, and you've got the anointing, you ought to leave a trail and say, this is where it's at. Tell somebody, say, I know where it's at. I know where it's at. I know where it's at. And so you ought to leave a trail. You ought to leave a trail behind. <laughs> you ought to leave an idea say, Whoo, this is where I got healed. This is where I got delivered. This is where I got set free. This is where I got a way out. This is where, where I got my, my, my power from. Somebody ought to be able to follow tr your trail. Can anybody follow your trail? Let me ask you that. Can, he, can anybody follow your trail? Can, can they follow your trail to church? Can, can they follow your trail in the word? Can they follow your trail in worship? Can they, can they follow you? Are you leaving enough behind? That's how Ruth, she come out in the field and she started picking up the left behind. The Bible says that Boaz looked out there and says, who is, who is this woman? He said, well, she come back from the land of Mo Moab. Uh, she, she come with Naomi. And she's just been out there every single day getting a little bit, anything we can find. And the Bible says that Boaz tells us, leave her handfuls of purpose. In other words, don't just try to get up everything, but leave her something to get. So when Ruth got out there, she said, oh, I got, some, I, mean, I got more today than I got yesterday. I got more then and now. Why? Because there was a trail being left. My God in heaven, God told me to tell you that we ought to be leaving a trail for people to get a hold of, to get. I, I'll preach that some other time. Look at someone and say, don't be selfish. 
Don't be selfish. I found out something. Uh, I'm going to tell my preachers in here, um, or anybody testifies, or anything like that. When God does something for you, tell him. Give it. I used to think, you know, God give me something real good. And the Lord, now this is just young preaching when I was real young. I did something like, man, i got to wait to a big crowd. Now, I'm just telling you me, I was real young. And so I'm like, I've got to wait to a big crowd. And, and, and the older I got, you know, I got to a place. I thought, God didn't give me nothing new. He said, I ain't going to give you nothing new until you share what I already gave you. You know what? So when I get a revelation, I call somebody. I'll call Sarah. I'll call Pastor Dewey. I'll call Till. I say, my God, this is what I got today. You know why? Because I will leave a trail so God will keep leaving me a trail to where I can keep getting more and more. When God does something for you, if you want God to do something new for you, talk about what he's already done. And if you talk about what he's already done, God's like, okay, I'll bless you there. I'll heal you there. I'll deliver you. Someone say Amen. Now, 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 a girl, the writer here, I'm going to read you, I'm going to give you something right here. The ants will grab something bigger than itself. You ever seen an ant? And when they start grabbing food, you ever notice? You see what they got a hold of. You'll see it first. Like, My God, that cracker, that cookie, whoo, is there a ghost? It's moving. And all of a sudden, you'll look and you investigate and you'll see a little ant start pulling. My computer, I'm going to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Let me beat it down. Remind me tomorrow, whatever it is. Look, look at my picture. I got beliefs bigger than them. And, and, and they get something bigger than them. And there is a reason why. Number one, the reason it tells us is to think big. And the reason why is ants are actually, uh, c according to proportion and even according to human nature, are stronger individually. They can carry 20 to 50 times their weight as an individual ant. Go look it up. So th th to be, uh, let's put it into our statistics, what that means. That means if you was as strong as an ant, you could go out there and pick up your car and carry it home. That's strong. So, so he says they're, they're, they're weak people. They're, 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 not, they're not a strong people according to human logistics. But even in their own right, he didn't know it. But they could carry something bigger than them. Oh, no. Oh because there was something stronger put in them to where they could grab something bigger than themselves. God told me to tell you that since my spirit is in you, that it's given you power to do what it don't look like you could do. To see what an ant does, it don't look like it. And there's some of you, God's about to anoint you to do something that it don't look like you could do. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And God's strength is made perfect even in our weakness. And when we're weak, then that's when the spirit of God become strong inside of us I come to tell you go ahead grab that vision it's bigger than you go ahead grab that dream I know it's bigger than you go ahead and go for that job I know it's bigger than you but God said to tell you I'm going to give you the power to get it and drag that baby in I'm going to give you the power to get it and pull it into what I've got for you God learned from the ant. Does someone say amen? They don't look at themselves and say, well, I'm too little. I know it's bigger than me. I know that candy, a piece of candy is bigger than me. Whew, but I've got more power than it. I've got more strength than it. You ever notice something about an ant? That when it does get a hold of something that it can't move, guess what comes with it? The other little buddies come say, well, we'll help you. And they'll start pulling that thing together. Huh? Look at someone say, I'll help you. 
I'll pray with you. I'll pray for you. I'll fast with you. I'll fast for you. I'll worship with you. I'll dance with you. I'll shout with you. Do we got anybody here says that says, you ain't going to have to do it by yourself. I'll help you. Just go grab it and we'll do it together. One can put a thousand to fly, but two can put ten thousand. I'm four minutes over. I'm going to quit on this last one. Can I give you one more? This is my last one. This is a good one. That's when I seen it, I said, oh God, how am I going to preach this? Now, ants, last one, they're everywhere in the world. They're in every continent. You can find an ant. Right? kind of different species of ants, but there are ants all over the world, which means there's believers all over the world. But there is one place on planet Earth that ants are not. They're everywhere except Antarctica. They can't live in a cold, dead area. And neither can a believer. I feel like preaching up in here. If you want to go to a dead church, God bless you. I'm glad you can go to Antarctica. But I got to be with somewhere where the heat is. I got to be somewhere where life is. I got to be somewhere where some anointing is. I got to be somewhere where some praise is. If you want to go to a church in here, if a dead dried up, broke up by the root song, if you want to, you be my guest. But when I come to this church, I want to hear, can't nobody do me like Jesus. I want to hear he's a healer. I want to hear he's a way maker. I want to hear a spirit. It is powerful. It is anointing. I've come to tell you, an ant can't live in Antarctica, and neither can a believer. We will not be a dead, dried up church, but we will be a church that's on fire. Whether that's a thousand of us or that's two of us, we're going to be a place that's going to have the glory of God and going to have the life of God. And some's going to be able to grow, and some's going to be able to live. Give somebody high five. Say, I can't live in Antarctica, honey. I can't live in them dead. I got to be a part. Or something that's alive. Well, glory to God. The ants are exceedingly wise. They're wise enough to say, We ain't going to the cold place. I don't care if the grandpa did build the church. I don't care if your grandma stitched up all the uh, all the carpet on the pews. Uh, I don't I don't care if it's dead, get out, God Almighty. If there ain't no anointing, get out. If there's no spirit, get out. We don't need no more dead six foot icicles sitting up here preaching something that they got off the internet. We need somebody that'll get up that's been in the prayer closet that says, God, you got to speak to us. God, you got to anoint us. Oh, I feel God up in here. That's what we need. Well, I made you mad, but that's all right. We wonder why our families are dying. We wonder why our preachers are dying. We wonder why people, ain't nothing alive. Ain't nothing alive. I said, ain't nothing alive. I want something that's living. I want to be where the, where the life is. I don't want to, I, I, don't, don't, I ain't don't live in Antarctica. Guess what, neither do people. Come on, somebody. You don't go up there and live and just camp out. People go up there and research and all kinds of stuff, but you don't find no big city. Woo! There's nothing that can't grow if something's cold and dead all the time. I want something that's living. That's why I want something alive. Can someone say amen? Uh, don't say that, Pastor. You'll get in trouble. Someone say, go ahead. I'll believe it will. Someone, talk, someone asked me one time, why don't you ever sing those songs about dying and going to heaven? I said, that's for a funeral. And we ain't here having a funeral, are we? Sorry, made you mad. That's all right. I don't want to see Tim cry. Think about it, you start talking about mama, it's went on, and daddy, it's went on. You sit there like, oh, my God, I want to see him. Of course you want to see him. We all want to see him. And so we start thinking about them instead of thinking about the God that's living.
Someone say amen. I, I love that song when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that'll be. But why can't we have a day of rejoicing right now? Come on, somebody. Life is hard enough. I want to hear something about the goodness of God. I don't want to be in Antarctica. Can someone say amen? Come on, clap your hands one more time. I'm going to sit down. I'm done. I made you mad, but that's